Good afternoon, our dear students. Let's continue our course of lectures in propedeutics of internal medicine. And topics of our today's lecture is methods of examination of patients with diseases of cardiovascular system. It is a very important topic, but today's lecture will be quite big. I'll try not to waste a lot of time on each slide, but I want to discuss with you uh, some specific signs and symptoms of cardiovascular system disorders uh, because in other systems in internal medicine we will discuss all signs and symptoms in different lectures about specific syndromes but about cardiovascular disorders uh, we decided to do a whole lecture in general about cardiovascular symptoms because it is a very big topic and it is one of the most difficult topics uh, for students and young doctors. That's why today we have such a work. Let's start. Paragraphs of our today's lecture. It is interviewing of patients or a conversation with patient. It is physical examination of patient or objective examination, instrumental methods and laboratory methods. Uh, interviewing of patient. Uh, it is uh, what good questions uh, we have to ask to get started in the core interview. Yes, first of all, what is your chief complaint? Or in other words, what is your main problem? Uh, and after the patient says it is the real cause why patient come to the doctor, you detailize everything about this problem or about this chief complaint. Next question is, tell me why you are here today. Yes, uh, is the, this problem result to it? Uh, some other problem, maybe it is a usual visit to the doctor and uh, it is no initial cause of this visiting. That's why this, import, uh, this question is important too. Next, tell me about your injury. You ask about all details about the problem. Uh, what can I do to help you? Yes, what patient waiting for the uh, from this visit? And explain me your understanding on your injury. You can get more uh, diagnostic information after uh, explaining how patient understand and what patient think about his or her problem. Uh, Okay, uh, what we pay attention during interview? Yes, it is a risk factor for different cardiovascular disorders. And what most important of them? It is age, it is sex of patient, it is race of ethnicity, it is uh, headedness, it is uh, BMI, high weight and body type, it is primary language, it is barriers to learning, it is learning preference and unique rehabilitation goals. And here, uh, like an example, you see a score, how we determine a risks according to uh, BMI for different cardiovascular problems. Uh, what is chief complaint? The medical evaluation of chief complaint of a person with suspected heart disease begins with an interview about the patient's major or chief complaint. The process begins from asking specific questions about the complaint. Very often the patient's chief complaint is the chest pain. It is one of the most often complaint uh, what patient think it is the most important. Uh, types of chest pain. Uh, yes, it's not always cardiovascular problem. It can be little bit other problems. Uh, that's why, because it is a very often situation when patient complain on chest pain, you should do differential diagnosis. Yes, and here in this scheme you see algorithm how to do this differential diagnosis. Please work with it very carefully, but individually at home with your contacts. Uh, are there often complaints? It is shortness of breath, it is dizziness, it is blackout spouse, 
It is palpitations, it is sensation of skipped fast flow of past heartbeats, weakness, swelling of legs, etc. Each of chief complaints will prompt a series of specific questions that will help arrive at a preliminary single diagnosis or a group of different diagnoses. It what I told. When you find a chief complaint, you have to get all information about chief complaint. You ask patient everything about this complaint, study ending, duration, effect effectiveness of drugs, localization, irradiation, intensity, character, everything. Uh, what about chest pain? What main points are we must stop when patient complain to chest pain? It is character of pain, it is location of pain, severity, timing, duration, and radiation. If uh, we talked about typical uh, uh, cardiac pain, or we name it angina, cardiac angina, uh, the most typical places of irradiation it is shoulder, arms, jaw, back, or other parts of the body. More real. Uh, next, we have to ask about provocation, about relieving conditions. When did it first start? How often does it occur? What bought on it? Uh, or what bought it on? And is it becoming more frequent with time? Where are their associated symptoms? Is it associated with shortness of breath, sweating, dizziness, weakness, nausea, vomiting, etc.? Are the symptoms lasting longer? Do they appear at rest or has it awakened the patient from the sound sleep? Uh, okay, what is the quality, what is the character of chest pain? can say patient uh, with this complaint. It can be squeezing a band-like sensation is felt around chest. It can be tightness. It is a sensation of a knot being present in the center of chest. It can be feeling of pressure, a sensation of a lump in throat or a heavy weight on the chest. It can be chest constriction. Uh, the Levine sign is displaced by a patient suffering from chest pain caused by myocardial infarction. The patient typically presses a uh, clenched first against the chest to illustrate the sensation of pressure and constriction of chest. It can be burning. Infarction pain is often mistaken for heartburn or indigestion, especially in women. Uh, factors that can influence pain. What uh, should we ask actively uh, or passively from the patient? Uh, let's return. What actively and passively? For example, uh, patient complains of chest pain. And you ask a general question, what factor influence the pain? And patient says, for example, physical stress. Yes, it is active complaint, active characteristic of this pain. It what patient note uh, individually. And if, for example, patient says pain or say nothing uh, after it, you should ask more actively. Uh, is it physical stress? Maybe it is emotional stress. Maybe it is cold or sexual intercourse or smoking or meals or sleeping problems. You ask of all these points and if patient says yes, for example, meals can provoke this pain or uh, make it more intense. We name it a uh, passive, uh, passive complaint, like complaint that patient uh, note just after asking you specific question. Uh, okay, intensity of pain. We usually ask patient to know intensity by scale from zero to ten. If where zero is no pain and ten, it is worst possible pain in their life. List of possible more specific complaints. Uh, 
bias which out it is pain in the heart region it is palpitations dyspnea cardiac asthma cough hemoptysis edema syncope irritability numbness or tingling skin changes or leg swelling uh, less even less specific it can be fever sweetness weight loss fatigue headache dizziness sleeplessness deranged vision uh, and hearing voice changes dysphagia dyspepsia thirst pain in abdomen pain in joints you see such a big range of symptoms can be in patients uh, pain in a heart region uh, pain or discomfort that occurs in area of heart muscles and here you see a scheme uh, why we see typical irradiations for heart pain it connected this uh, nervous regulation that the same or uh, uh, near the same nerves uh, innervate as hard as uh, this region it usually left arm left shoulder left jaw left part of neck uh, and epigastrium yes it is the most typical places of irradiation that have nearly the same innervation with the heart muscle uh, palpitation it is feelings of having a rapid fluttering or pounding heart. Yes, when we talk about palpitation, uh, we uh, talk about subjective feeling. And objectively, if in this in moment of these complaints, we do, for example, ACG or just auscultation with checking heartbeat, it will be usually increased. And here you see example uh, of uh, increased heart rate. Uh, in patient that feel in this more feels in this moment palpitation uh, dyspnea yes it is sensation of difficult or uncomfortable breathing uh, it can be wheezing coughing or shortness of breath due to congestive heart failure from cardiac problem it is the most often disorder that leads to dyspnea in patient and uh, it is most usual for aged people like in our patient at this picture cardiac asthma it is breathing difficulty associated with congestive heart failure too cough Persistent coughing can be a symptom of heart failure too. Yes, it is a, reflect, a reflectory stimulating of receptors due to pulmonary edema uh, and this stimulation can lead to reflectory cough. Hemoptysis. Hemoptysis, it is an act of coughing up blood or blood-stained mucus from the bronchi, larynx, trachea or lungs. The most common of these, it is left ventricle systolic heart failure. Edema. Cardiogenic edema is uh, an accumulation of serum fluid from blood plasma in the interstitial tissue as a result of congestive heart failure. And at this photo, you see the most typical case of severe cardiac edema. It is edema of low extremities. You see how such a big uh, her legs. And the most typical sites, it is low extremities. They started from foot and according to severity of heart failure, can go upper, upper, upper. And one more uh, early and sensitive organ for edema, it is liver. Uh, that's why hepatomegaly it is one of the early symptoms of congestive heart failure syncope shortness a short loss of consciousness and muscle stretch characterized by fast onset short duration and spontaneous recovery it is typical for different cardiac problems too uh, irritability it is an excitation response to stimuli possible symptom for cardiac disorders too not just ability of character of patient 
numbness or tingling. Numbness and tingling, it is unusual prickling sensation that can happen at any part of human body, but they are generally noticed in the hands, feet, arms and legs. Skin changes, and here you see uh, the most typical of them are uh, we name it cyanosis. It is a uh, blue coloration of skin. The most usual symptom, uh, most usual uh, disorder, it is heart failure too. And uh, different types of cyanosis, I hope you remember from the first class, uh, types of cyanosis we can see in pa pa a patient with heart failure. It can be acrocyanosis, like in this picture when it affected just fingers and, for example, ears. And it is can be perioral cyanosis when it is blue color around the mouth. Uh, and it can be diffuse cyanosis in several cases when all skin of body are uh, colored uh, in the blue color. Okay, what from past medical history we are usually interested in in patient with cardiac disorders? The past medical history will include questions about conditions such as diabetes, high blood pressure or hypertension, elevated cholesterol levels, prior surgery, asthma, stroke, cancer and allergies. Uh, okay, prior or current treatment should be asked during interviewing of patient because it adds you additional diagnostic information from this moment. For example, what medications uh, this patient used previously? Uh, uh, was it cardiac surgery or injections or uh, chiropractic or uh, exercise or physical therapy, specific medical physical therapy? Or uh, was this patient in emergency room or uh, did undergo uh, massage therapy? Or like at this picture, for example, some surgery like pacemaker implantation. Is it present pacemaker in this patient? Uh, if you find some options of previous treatment, uh, you should ask what kind of treatment, where it was performed, when it was performed, by whom it was performed. It all for you anamnestic diagnostic information. You ask it and you fix it in your case history. And by present uh, status, you uh, obligatory ask, is it better or the same or worse after those treatments that you discussed with the patient. Okay, family history, a very important moment in cardiovascular uh, patient as in all patient in internal medicine and especially important for cardiovascular disorders. Certain cardiac illnesses may occur in more than one member of family, most of them. The physician will inquire about the health of the patient's parents, brothers, sisters and children. Uh, social history of patient is very important for us too. Uh, here we are trying to find uh, behaviors, risk factors. What is it? The most important of them for cardiovascular, it is alcohol, tobacco or drug abuse. It is depression. It is violence or abuse. It is some kind of specific diet. It is presence of anorexia or bulimia in history, and it is sedentary lifestyle. Signs of any of above behaviors may warrant referral to a secondary provider. Uh, okay, why we are trying always to take such a careful medical history? Up to 90% of condition can be accurately diagnosed or recognized by a doctor by conducting it through a medical history and listening carefully to the patient response. One more time, you don't need any ex expensive tests, you don't need any other, uh, any other equipment or even objective examination. From previous lecture, you remember just your brain, it is a main instrument in patient investigation and diagnosing at all. And what connected with cardiovascular system? 
it is uh, just a conversation, just history and complaints. It is 90% of all diagnoses. Please remember the end. Be very, very careful and very, very detailed during conversation with patient. And it reminds that necessary tests and measures you should prioritize for your objective examination. Remember that we can't prescribe everything. All tests, laboratory, instrumental, you should choose uh, some list of them and prioritize it by importance. Start from the most important and if it's not enough for diagnosis, just after it you can add something else. And for it, you need uh, a very careful medical history. Okay, uh, during uh, conversation, during interview, we do short review of system, conversatory review of systems. Uh, the laundry list of symptoms related of uh, various organs of the body. Yes, orally you ask patient uh, system by system the most important signs and symptoms. A series of questions help seek out information that the patient may have uh, neglected to provide a physician. Uh, the patient uh, don't think that it is important information and uh, tell it uh, to you just after direct question. Review of system helps to identify the patient's problem or exclude different parts of differential diagnosis. Uh, system inquiry. Yes, if I discuss it short on practical classes, you will discuss it with teachers uh, more detailed. Uh, uh, it is in general, it is presence of fever, weight loss, loss of appetite, lethargy. Uh, from respiratory system, it is shortness of breath, cough, hemoptysis, wheeze and chest pain. From GI system, it is nausea and vomiting, hematomesis, dysphagia, heartburn, jaundice, abdominal pain, change in bowel habit, rectal bleeding, tenesmus, sensation of incomplete bowel emptying. From genitourinary system, it is presence of dysuria or pain of passing urine. Uh, it is frequency, terminal dribbling, urethral discharge. Uh, gynecological system. It is presence of pelvic pain, vaginal bleeding, vaginal discharge, LMP. From neurological system, it is headaches, dizziness, loss of consciousness, fits, pains, funny trance, numbness, tingling, weakness, problems uh, with speaking, changes in vision. Uh, and we can evaluate a general. Uh, general quality of life or general health of the patient uh, if you need it according to specific uh, uh, questionnaires the most often and the most usable in all world of them we named as uh, short form 36 osf 36 short form 36 it is a 36 item questionnaire which measures quality of life general quality across eight domains which are both physically and emotionally based. The eight domains are as follows. Physical functioning, role limitations due to physical health, role limitation due to emotional problems, energy or fatigue, emotional well-being, social functioning, pain and general health. A single item is also included that identifies perceived ch change in health, making the SF36 a useful indicator of change in quality of life over the time and treatment. It is a good way of controlling your management as a doctor. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, to evaluate functional status, uh, we can use, we told, the short form 36 and uh, one more uh, interesting questionnaire, it is sickness impact profile. 
It can be region-specific disability in dice, for example, dash, disability of arm, shoulder, hand. It is always true pain indices. It, it is more specific from, for neck and back. And it is lower extremity functional scale. Uh, or uh, it can be disease-specific scales according to different disease. It can be a rhythmological questionnaire, it can be diabetic questionnaire, hypertensive questionnaire, etc. Okay, positioning of patient. Yes, it is important moment for you, for cardiovascular patient. If the patient is positioned in supine position, tilted up at 45 degrees, if can tolerate this. The level of jugular venous pressure should only be commented on um, in this position as flatter or steeper angles lead to artificially elevated or reduced level respectively. Lighting should be adjusted so that it is not obscured by the examiner who will approach from the right-hand side of the patient uh, as is medical custom. General inspection of patient with uh, cardiovascular system disorder. Inspect the patient's status wherever he or she is comfortable at rest or obviously short of breath. Inspect the neck for increased jugular venous pressure or abnormal waves. Any abnormal movement such as head bobbing. There is specific signs associated with cardiac illness and abnormality. However, during inspection, any notized cutaneous signs should be noted. Uh, hands inspection. We can check a temperature. Is it warm or cool or clammy or dry? It is important diagnostic information. Uh, checking skin turgor for hydration. It is jaw isolation, uh, infective or infective endocarditis. It can be ulcer's note. Painful red raised lesions found on hands and feet are caused by immune complex deposition. It can be splinter hemorrhage, quinkers pulsation, any deformity of the nails, being slides or clubbing fingers, or peripheral cyanosis. Head inspection, the molar flush or mitral stenosis uh, can be found. Uh, the eyes for corneal arcus and surrounding tissues so for xanthelasma, you see in the second picture xanthelasma, it is lipid accumulation around the eye. It is conjunctiva pillar, a sign of anemia. The mouth for hygiene, the mucosa for hydration and pillar of central cyanosis, the ear lobes for Frank's sign. You see, uh, you see uh, in the last picture this sign. Okay, precordial inspection. What we should check in cardiac patient? It is visible pulsations. It is apex beat, masses, scars, lesions, signs of trauma and previous surgery, permanent pacemaker, precordial bunch. Here you see a picture uh, of subcutaneous uh, permanent pacemaker uh, in a sting patient. You see how detailized we can find sometimes uh, the picture of this pacemaker. Uh, okay, checking pulses, radial, brachial and carotid during palpation. It is the most uh, important pulses during your examination. What we check? We check rate, rhythm, pulse pressure, regularity. Is it regular, regular, irregular, irregular, irregular? Uh, we can check consistency of the stretch to access for pulsus alternance. It can be slow rising, for example, pulsus parvus or tardus. Uh, jerky for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Otrobus pistol short femoral pulse. Uh, Precordial palpation. What should we check? 
The valve areas are palpated for abnormal positions, palpable heart movements known as thrills, and precordial movements known as heavies. The apex bead is found approximately in the fifth left intracostal space in the midclavicular line. It can be impalpable for variety reasons, like an obesity, emphysema, effusion, uh, rarely it can be dextrocardia. It is assessed for size, amplitude, location, impulse and duration. There are specific terms to describe the sensations such as tapping, having and thrusting. Okay, cardiac percussion. Here the question, is it a lost art? Uh, why we ask this question? Because in modern clinics, doctors use it more rarely and more rarely every year. But it is still very important because a lot of specific diagnostic information you can uh, check just by palpation, uh, percussion and preliminary understanding of size uh, of structures in a chest we can uh, get just after cardiac percussion without any additional tests uh, that's why you like a student should know uh, know it should learn everything about uh, it and uh, on practical classes and at your home uh, practice it on each other and in future in clinic we will do it with the patients there was a time when a cardiac percussion was considered a useful addition in clinical evaluation of the patient with heart disease. This skill had been largely lost with the advent of new imaging techniques such as X-ray, echocardiography, both of which are more accurate in defining cardiac size and borders and detecting the presence and extent of a pericardial fluid. When used in isolation, cardiac percussion is prone to error, but when used in clinical context with other findings, it could still be an invaluable bedside tool in differentiating tamponade, for example, from acute massive pulmonary embolism until confirmation with echocardiography. When we have a very limited time, we need some a bedside uh, good rapid tool. What about auscultation? Auscultation is usually performed with the patient sitting up or reclined and about 45%. Sides for auscultation. It is mitral valve area at the apex bit as the left ventricle is closest to the thoracic cage. Tricuspid valve area. It is inferior right sternal margin in the point closest to valve in which auscultation is possible. Uh, pulmonary atrial valve area. It is left second intercostal space closer to the sternum is where the uh, infundibulum is closest to thoracic uh, cage. And aortic valve area. Right second intercostal space close to the sternum is where the ascending aorta is nearest to thoracic cage. Uh, you learn more on practical classes uh, about these points. Please note it for yourself and remember for uh, your own life. It is four main points and one additional point, Alpus point or additional point of occultation of our tipa. Uh, the best place to hear the heart valves is not necessarily directly over the anatomical side. That's why the direct projection of valve it is not uh, always connected with the best place of auscultation of this valve. One more time, sides of auscultation. You see, first uh, it is a mitral. Uh, first, fifth intracostal space from midclavicular line. Uh, aortic second point, it is left right sternum, second intracostal space. Pulmonic left stern, uh, sternum, second intracostal space. Herbs point, third intracostal space. And tricuspid point, it is fourth or fifth intracostal space. Normal heart sounds in auscultation. In health process, sounds are noises generated by the beating heart and resultant from flow of blood through it. 
The sounds reflect the turbulence created when the heart valves are a snap shut. In healthy adults, there are two normal heart sounds, lap, adap, dab, that occur in sequence with each heartbeat. There is a first heart sound, or S1, and the second heart sound, at S2, produced by closing of atrioventricular valves uh, and semilunar valves. The third sound may be split if there is pacing that triggers the right ventricle before the left uh, or if mitral valve closure is delayed by high left atrial pressure or atrial mixoma. The sounds may be softer than normal where there is severe mitral regurgitation, immobility from calcification, severe aortic regurgitation or left bundle branch block. Prolapse mitral valve or significant mitral stenosis may cause a loud M1. Normally, A2 and P2 are so close that they are had a single sound, although they may split slowly on deep inspiration as P2 is delayed. Beat-to-beat -beat variation in the intensity of S2 occurs with complete or incomplete heart block if there, uh, there is AV dissociation. P2 is delayed and will accentuate splitting in pulmonary hypertension, pulmonary stenosis and right bundle branch block. Ectopic beats and pacing will delay A2 and cause reverse splitting on the further sound. Uh, additional sounds that we can uh, hear, we usually name heart murmurs. Uh, it is adventitious respiratory sounds. Gallop rhythm, as uh, additionally to it, we can uh, hear respiratory sounds. More of it, we can hear gallop rhythm uh, S3 and S4, two more tones additionally to S1, S2, may be heard in young or athletic people, ordinary signs of serious cardiac problems like heart failure as well as pulmonary edema. Heart murmurs are generated by turbulent blood flow which may occur inside or outside the heart. Murmurs may be physiological, benign, or pathological, abnormal. Abnormal murmurs can be caused by stenosis restricting the opening uh, heart valve, resulting in turbulence as blood flows through it. Abnormal murmurs may also occur with valvular insufficiency, regurgitation, which allows backflow of blood when the incompetent uh, valve closes with only partial effectiveness. Different murmurs are audible in different parts of cardiac cycle, depending on the cause of the murmur. Third and fourth sounds of auscultation. Third sound in heart value produce a cadence like a galopizing horse, like gallop rhythm, it hearing like The fourth sound occurs in ventricle hypertrophy, ischemic heart disease, mitral stenosis, dilated cardiomyopathy, hyperdynamic circulation, arrhythmia, heart blocks just before the first and is an abnormal sound of the AV valves opening as the atria contract. An atrial myxoma can plop during atrial systole and cause the late diastolic sound that we hear like S4. Uh, okay, uh, we have a scale, it is Levine's scale of, scale of heart sounds and murmurous graduation in auscultation. Uh, scale 1, it is the lowest intensity, difficult to hear even by experts. Grade 2, low intensity but usually audible to all listeners. And grade 3, medium intensity, easy to hear even by inexperienced listeners but without a palpable thrill. Fourth, it is medium intensity with palpable thrill. Fifth, 
Light allowed intensity with a palpable thrill, audible even with the stethoscope placed on the chest with the edge of the diaphragm. And 6. It is the loudest intensity with a palpable thrill, audible even with the stethoscope raised above the chest. Uh, what about jugular venous pressure? In examination we told that we always check it. The jugular venous pressure, sometimes referred as jugular venous pulse, is the indirectly observed pressure over the venous system via visualization of internal jugular vein. This pressure can be useful if the differentiation of different forms of heart and lung disease. Classically, three upward deflections and two downward deflections of the jugular venous pressure can be. The upward deflections are the A, atrial contraction, C, ventricular contraction, uh, and resulting bulging of tricuspid into the right atrium during isovolumetric systole, and V, atrial venous filling. The downward deflections of the wave are the X, the atrium relaxes and tricuspid valve moves downward, and the wide descent, filling of ventricle after tricuspid opening. The A wave corresponding to right atrial construction and ends, ends synchronously with the carotid atrial pulse. The C wave corresponds to right ventricle construction causing the tricuspid valve to bulge toward the right atrium. X descends flows the A wave and corresponds to the atrial relaxation and rapid atrial filling due to low pressure. And V wave corresponding to venous filling when the tricuspid valve is closed and the venous pressure increases from the venous return. This occurs during the following the carotid pulse. And the Y descent corresponds to the rapid emptying of atrium into the ventricle following the opening of the tricuspid valve. Okay, what is carotid brood? A carotid brood is a systolic sound heard over the carotid artery area during auscultation. Many carotid broods are discovered identically in an or uh, otherwise asymptomatic. Any brood must be evaluated by ultrasound or imaging patient. And we have uh, another diagnostic test. It is ankle brachial pressure index. The ankle brachial pressure index or an ankle brachial index is the ratio of blood pressure in the lower legs to the blood pressure in the arms. Compared to the arm, lower blood pressure in leg is an indi uh, indication of blocked arteries, peripheral artery disease or part. And here you see classification according to level of this pressure. And by this classification in this relation, we can check is it present peripheral artery disease and not present or its severity. Uh, the ABI is calculated by dividing a systolic blood pressure at the ankle by systolic blood pressure at the arm. Electrocardiography or ACG. Let's start instrumental methods that we use in cardiology or cardiovascular disorders. And the most often, most rapid, uh, one of the most simple and most useful, it is ACG. What it is definition and targets? Electrocardiography, it is a test that records the electrical activity of the heart. An ECG is used to measure any damage to the heart, how fast heart is beating and wherever it is beating normally, the effects of drugs or devices used to control the heart such as pacemaker, the size and position of heart chambers. The accuracy of ACG depends on the condition being tested. A heart problem may not always show up on the ACG. 
Some heart conditions never produce any specific ACG changes, and here it is uh, uh, correct, for example, for heart failure. Uh, okay, devices in historical portrait for electrocardiography. If on the first picture uh, you see the first device for electrocardiography, you see such a big, uh, such a complicated device. On the last uh, two pictures, you see a modern hospital devices. Yes, it is not too big, and it is a record can save and print ACG strips. Uh, to the paper or to the computer for future analyzing. And for today we have a very uh, portative, a very small devices for ACG record recording. Uh, for it we can use uh, small individual uh, medical devices or uh, even the modest uh, watches uh, can um, uh, can record ACG, uh, ACG strips and save to your smartphone, to your tablets or to your computer. And record examples. Yes, here you see an ACG complex. Uh, you discuss everything about it on practical classes. More of it, uh, we preparing for you additional course on Moodle platform about basics uh, of diagnosing uh, electrocardiography diagnosing and there it will be a lot of very interesting and very useful information during classes we don't have time and possibility to give it to you that's why please register uh, in a Moodle uh, by your student profile for this course our cardiologists prepare it for you and first uh, um, uh, first course will, will start in October. And here you see example of ACG strips for normal heartbeat, for fast heartbeat, slow heartbeat, or for example irregular heartbeat. Uh, ambulatory electrocardiogram or we name it Holter monitoring. Sometimes we uh, it is not enough for us one or three minute typical ACG in hospital. We need a longer record. Uh, most usual it is 24 hours whole day analyzing, recording and analyzing of ACG of patient. And for it we use ambulatory devices. A Holter monitor, it is a type of ACG used to monitor the ACG tracing continuously for a period of 24 hours or longer. The Holter monitor used for suspected frequent rhythm abnormalities, especially ones where may not recognize by symptoms. It is atrial fibrillation of large. It is multifocal atrial tachycardia, palpitations, paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia, reasons for fainting, slow heart rate or bradycardia, ventricular tachycardia, chronomedicine and others. Okay, devices for Holter monitoring you see here from the most uh, uh, for the most complicated and for and today it is a very small uh, devices that not affect quality of life during this day of patient and all. And example of recording uh, of Holter monitoring, you see it is not complete 12 leads uh, strip, we usually uh, record 3 or 6 uh, leads for analyzing uh, all problems, first of all rhythm of patient during day and night. Uh, okay, we have another type of monitoring, it is event monitoring. An event monitor records short-term ECG rhythm patterns, generally storing at last 2 to 5 minutes, adding in new and discarding old data from 1 to 2 weeks or more. When the wearer presses a button on the monitor, it quits discarding old and discontinuous recording for a short additional period. These monitors are used to suspected infrequent rhythm abnormalities, especially ones the wearer does not recognize by symptoms. 
here you see a small event monitors devices for it when patient can record some uh, short recordings according to some event and example of reports uh, from event monitors it is ACG strip one three six leads uh, in moment of some events usually patient write diary what event if it's uh, if it was some symptom or if it was for example physical activity and according to this diary uh, diary you can analyze what kind of read what kind of ACG was in moment of some specific event Okay, we have a cardiac stress test for diagnosing of cardiovascular disorders. A test used to measure a heart's ability to respond on external stress in controlled clinical environment. The stress response is induced by exercise or drug stimulation. Cardiac stress test compared to coronary circulation while the patient is in at rest with the same patient circulation observed during maximum physical exertion, slowing any abnormal blood flow to the heart's muscle tissue myocardium. The results can be interpreted as a reflection of the general physical condition of the test patient. This test can be used to diagnose ischemic heart disease and for patients' prognosis after a heart attack, uh, for example, myocardial infarction. Uh, cardiac stress test is done too. Find the cause of unexplained chest pain on pressure. Decide which treatments are best for person with angina. Evaluate the patient's ability to tolerate exercise. Find the cause of symptoms that occur during exercise or activity. Evaluate the efficiency of anti anginal and antiarrhythmic therapy. And here you see the picture. It is treadmill test. When patient do some physical activity, it is controlled activity. It is gradually increased activity, and during all these uh, all these uh, moments. Uh, a doctor, a functional doctor, record ACG, check blood pressure, breathing and complaints, general well-being of the patient. Uh, next test, it is cardiac uh, stress test and its specific type stress echocardiography. Cardiac stress test may be accompanied with echo. The echocardiography is performed both before and after the exercise so that structural differences can be compared. The patient is subjected to stress in the form of exercise or chemically induced stress, usually dobutamine. This is used to detect obstructive coronary disease. A test measures blood flow to patient's heart at rest and stress as a result of exertion or medication. The test uh, provides images that can show areas of low blood flow through the heart and damages heart muscle. It connected with nuclear stress test. Uh, electrophysiology study. What is it? A minimally invasive procedure, but invasive, that tests the electrical conduction system of the heart. It is the most, uh, uh, most detailed uh, diagnostic way uh, to check uh, autonomy and uh, conductive system of heart. During electrophysiology studies, sinus rhythm as well as supraventricular and ventricular arrhythmias of baseline cardiac intervals is recorded. Uh, the electrophysiology study is indicated to investigate the cause, location of origin and best treatment for various abnormal heart rhythms. This type of study is performed by electrophysiologists and using a single or multiple catheter situation within the heart through the vein on or artery. It is intra-heart catheters. 
Here you see a laboratory, electrophysiology laboratory. Here, like an example, University Mississippi Medical Center in United States. But in Kharkiv, we have electrophysiology laboratory too. It is in Institute of Surgery. And it looks like one room uh, with patient and operating surgeons. And another room, it is operation room with uh, several computers where uh, the doctors, electrophysiologists, analyze uh, rhythm and all characteristics of heart during this procedure. Uh, technique. You see that uh, here catheters uh, through the veins come into the uh, left, uh, come into the right atrium. After it, it can go to the right ventricle or uh, to the left heart. And from different points, this electrode record electrical activity. Uh, it is intensity, it is timing, and according to it, we can build a map of electrical activity of this heart. Is it a normal pacemaker? Is it is normal conduction of electrical impulses? Is it some ectopic pathological points of, for example, some arrhythmias? All of them we can check by this point electrical activity. And here you see this map uh, that I told. When we check in different points uh, electrical activity, it built a scheme of chamber 3D uh, map of chamber here, the atrium. Uh, and in different color it uh, shows the timing of electrical activity and you see that it starts from the red it is epicenter of this activity and gradually like a wave goes uh, through the old chamber Uh, the voltage map of the right ventricle rotated to show the scar of appendix. In this uh, picture you see a scar. Representative signals from three regions within the scar show double potentials with the second component occurring well beyond uh, of the end of the QRS complex. Uh, okay, here is an example on Wenkenbach uh, cycle lengths appearance during electrophysiology study. It is another pathology that we can diagnose and confirm just with electrophysiology. The right atrium is being paced of the uh, some additional channel. The time between A and V increases until the ventricle signal is blocked due to repolarization of the ventricle as indicated by T wave. The Wenkenbach cycle length 600 milliseconds is significantly abnormal interval. And another uh, type, another diagnostic test that can in future continue in treatment, uh, treatment option, it is coronary catheterization or cardiac catheterization or cardiac cath coronary angiogram. It is an invasive imaging procedure that tests for heart disease by allowing doctor to see the inside the arteries and how well patient's heart is functioning. During the test, a long narrow tube called the catheter uh, is inserted into the blood vessel patient's arm or leg and guided to the heart from there. Contrast due, uh, dye is injected through the catheter so that X-ray movies of patient's valves, coronary arteries and heart chambers in real time can be created. Here you see a picture of coronary or cardiac catheterization. On first picture and all others you see examples, for example, of narrowing of obstruction. Yes, coronary artery disease it is very often very important problem. We will have uh, one more lecture about it. And here are examples of course you see that it is partial or complete obstruction of coronary artery that can be visualized by coronary catheterization. Uh, Transthoracic echocardiogram, one more very good and very useful method of visualization of heart. 
Transthoracic echocardiogram uses ultrasonic waves for continuous heart chamber and blood movement visualization. In recent times, it has become one of the most commonly used tools in diagnosis of heart problems, as it allows non-invasive visualization of heart and the blood flow through the heart using technique known as Doppler. Here you see uh, the device for transthoracic echocardiogram. It's non-invasive method. It's just a device that plays on the chest. And by ultrasound, it's not sensitive, not painful. Uh, it shows you a picture of tissue structures uh, in the chest of patient. And here is result example of echocardiography in different regime. Without color, it is usual regime. With coloration, it is Doppler regime. And here you see uh, a structure, sizes, pathologies, blood floors, etc. Transesophageal echocardiogram sometimes for some pathology it's not enough transthoracic echo and we use a transesophageal echo. It uses a specialized probe containing an ultrasound transductor uh, at its tip is passed into the patient's esophagus. It is used in diagnostic of various thoracic defects or damage uh, like heart or lung imaging. Esophageal echocardiogram has some advantages and disadvantages over thoracic or intravascular ultra ultrasound. Yes, you see method. Uh, the principle the same that it is ultrasound uh, device, but it plays not in the chest. It plays into esophagus uh, of patient, and some structure we can see just from the esophagus. Uh, and here uh, the result. You see, we see some structure, some signs, and for example, shown B and changes in chamber of heart. Uh, yeah, and it can be intravascular ultrasound, also known as percutaneous echocardiogram, as an imaging methodology using speci uh, specially designed long, thin, complex manufacturer's catheters attached to computerized ultrasound equipment to visualize the lumen and interior wall of blood vessels. Here you see the scheme of this ultrasound. It is complicated device. And here you see result example. We usually see such a picture. Yes, uh, it is a loss of uh, uh, loss of uh, vessels. Yes, it is some structures can be plex, it can be obstructions. All of it we can see during intravascular ultrasound. Uh, one more method, it is quite expect, expensive and uh, that's why uh, we use it more rare, but in some cases uh, it is obligatory. It is positron emission tomography. A positron emission tomography or PET, an imaging methodology for positron emitting radioisotopes. PET enables visual image analysis of multiple different metabolic chemical processes and is thus one of the most flexible imaging technologies. Cardiology uses are growing very slowly due to technical and relative cost difficulties. Most uses uh, are for research, not clinical purposes. Appropriate radioisotopes of elements within chemical compounds of metabolic pathway being examined are used to make the location of the chemical compounds of interest visible in a PET scanner constructed image. Here you see device for positron emission tomography. And it is a picture like a result example from PET. Uh, computer tomography and geography. Uh, an imaging methodology using a ring shaped machine with X ray source spinning around the circular part so as to bath the inner circle with a uniform and known X ray density. 
Redevelopment and growth will be seen in the short term, allowing radiologists to diagnose cardiac artery disease without anesthesia and in a non-invasive way. And it is device for computer tomography and geography. And results example, yes, it is 3D uh, visualization of heart, for example, or uh, heart vessels. Uh, magnetic resonance imaging, sometimes used in cardiology too, or nuclear magnetic resonance imaging or MRI, and methodology based on aligning the sp spin axis of nuclei within molecules of the object being visualized using most powerful superconducting magnets and radio frequency signals and detectors. MRI differentiates soft tissues better than computer tomography and allows for comprehensive exams including the quantitative assessment of size, morphology, function and tissue characteristics is one single session. It is device, it looks like nearly the same with CT or PET. Uh, but it is magnetic resonance imaging. Yes, uh, this device based on absolutely other uh, technique. Uh, it is a result example of MRI. Uh, okay, and for today we have my tag that transforms the world. The controlling of uh, patients' well-being and controlling of symptoms become more easy. Easy with the uh, researching of new individual devices and for today usual smartphone and usual watches uh, can uh, check and can control some symptoms and even uh, call for emergency in some uh, in some emergent case Cardio defender diagnostic symptoms. A smartphone ACG can provide continuous reading throughout the day and can help detect arrhythmias that may be hard to spot in office visit. And modern watches even uh, can detect falling of patient and uh, check if patient unconsciousness in this case call for emergency. It can be wireless blood pressure monitors for hypertensive patients, easy and precise self-measurement of blood pressure with personal smartphone. A health tracking wristband that could give healthcare professionals real-time information on the well-being of their patient or the watches share, um, uh, check and sense that it now it is some episode, for example, arrhythmia or heart stopping or something else, and send this information in real time to the patient's doctor. The variable can measure a patient's pulse, activity level, skin temperature, heartbeat, rhythm, light in, uh, levels, and light exposure. And laboratory methods. Uh, for cardiology, uh, they are not such uh, wide used like instrumentally, but in most patients they are very important too. What we usually do? Ordinary test kit. It is blood count, blood sugar test, blood test for those talking anticoagulants, blood thinners or coagulogram we name it. It is blood test for determining risk of coronary artery disease. It is B-type natriuretic peptide blood test for heart failure diagnosing. It is checking of electrolytes level, enzyme and protein blood tests, lipid blood test, thyroid blood test, urine albumin creatinine ratio. Uh, okay, here uh, more about coagulogram, where you remember that uh, it uh, normal coagulation system in patient have been in balance uh, to prevent a thromboembolism on one hand as hemorrhage on another hand. And for it we used proton beam time, a normal range for adults from 9.9 .9 to 13 seconds. 
and uh, for controlling of patient treatment, especially warfarin treatment, anticoagulant treatment, we use such tests like International Normalized Radio or ENR, normal level for adult from 0 0.9 to 1.2. And for example, for patients who undergo anticoagulant treatment, it will be absolutely other norms. Uh, test to determine risk of coronary artery disease. It is checking of lipoprotein A associated with high risk of heart attack and stroke uh, desirable level for adults, less than 30 mg per deciliter. And apolipoprotein A1 is a major protein of HDL, how levels is associated with increased risk uh, of early uh, cardiovascular disease, uh, desirable level for adults more than 123 mg per deciliter. Apolipoprotein B found uh, in cholesterol uh, practicals, ApoB may be better overall marker of risk than LDL alone. Goal values less than 100 for those with low intermediate risk, less than 80 mg per deciliter for high risk individuals, such as those with cardiovascular disease or diabetes. Uh, BNP or B type natriuretic peptide. Non traditional blood protein main in, uh, made in heart and found in the blood. High levels are associated with increased risk of cardiovascular disease, heart attack, and heart failure development. Elevated levels are associated with development of heart failure and worse prognosis. Goal values less than 125 picograms per milliliter. Uh, enzyme and protein uh, blood test. Here you see a normal ranges of different enzyme and protein that are responsible to some pathology of target organs like liver, kidney, uh, muscles and other target organs. You can find normal for LT or alanine aminotransferate, aspartate aminotransferate or ST, creatinine, creatine kinase, lactate dehydrogenase, myoglobin, been troponin T. Lipid blood test, very important for cardiac patients. Uh, here we find total cholesterol, a high level can put you at increased risk of heart disease. Ideally, total cholesterol should be below 200 mg per deciliter or 5.2 millimoles per liter. Uh, and its fractions like low density lipoprotein, too much of it in blood causes the accumulation of fatty deposits, plaques in arteries. We name it atherosclerosis. Here you see norms. High density lipoprotein cholesterol. Ideally, uh, it a level should be six, uh, 60 mg per deciliter or 1.6 millimole per liter or higher. Uh, through its common that HDL cholesterol is higher in women than men. And triglycerides, high level increase risk of heart disease, ideally triglyceride level less than 150 or 1.7 in millimoles. C-reactive protein. CRP it is a sign of inflammation somewhere in the body. It is very not specific sign. Inflammation plays a central role in the process of atherosclerosis in which fatty deposits clog arteries. CRP test result can be interpreted as putting heart disease risk at low risk when it is less than 1 mg per liter, overage risk from 1 to 3 mg per liter, and high risk above 3 mg per liter. Thyroid blood test. Here we usually check thyroid stimulating hormone, uh, thyroxine or T4, and microsomal thyroid antibodies or TPO. Urine albumin creatinine ratio. Albumin is a protein found in urine that can be a sign of increased risk for kidney disease, diabetes complication, and cardiovascular risks. 
If elevated level of this relation are present, close attention to blood pressure control, including use of specific blood pressure medications that help protect the kidney, may be recommended. Goal values more than 300 mg indicates risk of cardiovascular disease and diabetic nephropathy and more than 300 mg per gram indicates clinical nephropathy. Okay, for today, uh, it's all slides that I wanted to show you. Uh, if you have more questions, as usual, you can ask your questions or make some comments or uh, if uh, you have something else to tell us, you can write under this video on YouTube or in our closed Facebook group of our department. And as usual, I ask you to leave your name and your group number under this video. Uh, for today, that's all. See you at next lecture and have a good education in internal medicine.